Today I'll show you the easy way to make a steak and onion pie. Sometimes called a mincemeat pie or just a meat pie, but whatever you want to call it, it would be a real missed steak not to give this a try. So let's go ahead and get started here with one tablespoon of butter. Although if your beef is at least 20% fat, you can skip the butter, but the beef I'm using here today is semi-lean. It's actually ground beef from my favorite company, ButcherBox, which is not only grass-fed, but grass-finished, which means the cows ate nothing but grass for their whole lives. Not a sponsor, I just really love the company, so I will put a link down in the description if you would like to check that out. And as that gets sizzling, we're going to go ahead and chop in one large onion. And after we take our cloves off, we'll crush in three cloves of garlic. Now we want to season liberally with salt and pepper. Personally, I like a lot of pepper in this. Now we're just going to crank our heat up to high and saute this until everything is nice and brown. Once everything's cooked for us, we can go ahead and turn the heat down to low, and we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. This is why we added the butter in the beginning. The flour and fat is going to form a basic roux in our pan, allowing us to thicken this. Don't forget the flour now, or you might ruin it. Floury jokes aside, it is important to mix this in with our fat and let it cook for at least a minute or two to get rid of that raw taste. And at this point, we're going to add about one cup of beef broth. You could use water if you wanted, but I really wanted that double beefed in flavor. We want to start stirring as soon as the liquid goes in. This is going to thicken up really fast on us. So give it a stir as that comes up to a simmer and make sure and scrape and try and dissolve off all those wonderful little brown bits off the bottom of the pan. And don't worry if it seems really, really thick. It should. We really don't want this going anywhere. And now is also the perfect time to taste for seasoning. I found mine needed just another pinch of salt, and for an extra kick of umami, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, sometimes referred to as British soy sauce. Just mix to combine, and that's it. Our meat pie filling is ready. So we're just going to set this aside to cool a little as we prepare our pie crust. Now, you could make a crust from scratch if you wanted to, but I'm going to use one of these pre-prepared crusts. Just make sure you let it come up to room temperature first, otherwise you won't be able to unroll it. It'll crack on you. Using these cuts our prep time way down, and we can have this dish ready to eat in about 45 minutes. And with the style we're using today, we only need the one pie crust, so we could easily make two meat pies at the same time, or what I did, I used the second pie crust to make an actual pie. The key is to roll these out fairly thin. We want to increase their diameter by about 50% or so. With how thick our filling is, you can easily make these on a sheet pan, but just to be safe, I'm going to make mine inside of a 9-inch cast iron pan. I thought I was going to be smart and use one of these cut-out round parchment paper things, but that actually didn't work out as well as I thought. You'll see more about that later. Anyway, we want to carefully drape our pie dough over our prepared receptacle of choice and just load in all that wonderful beef and onion filling. When it's partially cool like this, it almost looks like it doesn't have built-in gravy, but trust me, once it's baked and all hot, that beef filling is going to have such an awesome gravified texture. We'll just give our beef filling the old pat down for safety here, and then we want to carefully fold up the sides of our pastry. And depending on how thinly we roll this, it's not going to come all the way up to the middle, and that's just fine. We're actually looking for that. That meat in the middle is not only super pretty, but it vents the pie for us too. This style of pastry is called a galette, which is really one of my favorites, by a razor-thin margin. And last but definitely not least, we want to cover this with a quick egg wash. This is just one beaten egg. People always eat with their eyes first, and doing this gives this the most beautiful golden brown color. Now we just bake this at 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. Now, here's the part I regretted using that little parchment round. You see, I really wanted it to cool on the wire rack to preserve the crispiness of the crust, but I couldn't really get a hold of that round without burning myself, so I wound up having to use a spatula, and whoops. Ah, oh, well, that's okay. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. There we go, good as new. Now, I do recommend you let this cool for at least 10 minutes, but then you'll be ready to serve. I hope you found this episode of Passion for Food useful. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future videos. And check out one of our other great recipes on the screen now. This has been Graham with a Passion for Food.